Well, English Gothic architecture is sometimes called perpendicular style, and that is, it's vertical. And I sometimes say, like in Duke Chapel, no matter where your eye falls in the beginning, it always goes upward, and that's by design. Uh, one might think of it, it, it kind of lifts your eyes up from the earth, heavenward, upward, and uh, does this multiple ways with the pinnacles and the arches, etc. Uh, even the arches, uh, classical Roman arches are rounded arches. Uh, Gothic arches are pointed arches and they're lancet arches like the point of a spear. And, um, and another characteristic that's fun is the, the vegetative motifs inside those vegetative motifs uh, are southern pine trees and oak trees and pine cones and i think that's kind of nice and sort of the, the sense is that a, a gothic building has a kind of organic feel like it's sort of grown up uh, it's a piece of sculpture that is kind of rising up out of the earth and so uh, from the interior you have this long central aisle, the, the, long, the aisle of Duke Chapel is 215 feet long, uh, thus a favorite place for weddings so brides can show off their dress all the way down to 215 feet and back. Normally, as, as you know, um, you, you have statues of saints it's kind of weird because the people who founded Duke University were Methodist Christians, and that means they're Protestant Christians, and that means that their churches don't really have any. Most Protestant churches are stripped down, very simple. Simplicity is a virtue. So it was kind of weird to hear these Protestant Methodists building this Gothic Catholic cathedral in the middle of this campus. Uh, and I have said it, it's a really peculiar collection of, quote, saints uh, greet you when you enter Duke Chapel. Coming in, you've, you've got kind of three great preachers. And that kind of makes sense because Protestantism puts a lot of stress on preaching and all. To the right, you've got three great, at that time, Southerners. We think those statues were probably selected by Dr. Few, William Preston Few, native of South Carolina, who was the first president of Duke and talked Mr. Duke into giving his money for the university. And he was an English professor and a, an old Southern gentleman kind of guy. And he must have selected those statues and uh, those personages to be there as statues. But it is kind of weird, in fact, uh, there are no statues of saints or biblical figures in the chapel until you get to the chancel, the altar area. And there you've got some saints like the patron saint of music and all, and you've got uh, uh, carved in stone. And you, But over the altar, you've got carved in wood, uh, Jesus, Pontius Pilate, and some biblical people there. In, in a way, the chapel having these a big gothic building like this and all it was not to be cynical but it was kind of a way for southern methodists to say hey uh, we're no longer a protestant sect uh in the wilderness uh we, we're educated now uh, we're building universities uh, we've got money and now we're going to show you that you've got um, Washington Duke, who was the patriarch, father of the family. You've got James B. Duke, who gave us the money. And you've got Benjamin N. Duke, James B. Duke's brother, younger brother, who was kind of in the business with him. Um, he was not a, a benefactor. I guess he probably didn't have as much money as Mr. Duke had. But they're buried there. Their wives are buried elsewhere. They're buried in a cemetery in Durham added on um, during the building process, but by the, the founder, uh, by um, the friends of Mr. Duke, the Duke Endowment, basically raised the money as a memorial to James B. Duke and uh, built that 
uh, Memorial Chapel, which I think is one of the most beautiful Gothic rooms in America. Um, and there's sarcophagi there carved in Carrera marble. Uh, downstairs in the crypt, you've got an assemblage of uh, some uh, Duke presidents and some of the uh, chaplains, the deans of the chapel are buried there. And I have a letter saying that I will be buried there uh, when I die. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see. The arts have had a up and down relationship with the church, I guess, over the years. Uh, the, the Catholic church, medieval church, found that um, art was a, a kind of vehicle that helped the faithful focus on God. Uh, building these big, beautiful buildings was seen to be a worship aid. Uh, in Gothic Middle Ages, uh, also it's been said that the windows uh, in churches became teaching devices. People couldn't read and scriptures were all in Latin, which not everybody could speak. And um, so, and, and you see that tradition carried on Duke Chapel. You've got a Jacob window and a Gideon window. And, a, and then on the first level of windows are all New Testament scenes, Jesus, scenes from Jesus' life, scenes from Jesus' parables. And all, on, on the top, the big windows up top are all Old Testament images. Uh, I think the windows uh, light in Gothic architecture, you have these dark buildings. And, you know, when you're in Duke Chapel on the afternoon, the light plays off the walls and it's all colored, multicolored. And it, it's, it really adds to a kind of mystical sense. Um, so that art is used that way. Protestants generally felt in the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s in Northern Europe, um, that all of these images and all and beauty had become a distraction and that the faithful were more focused on these statues of saints and all than they were on Jesus and that uh, these these the art violated the first commandment the first commandment you shall have no other gods before you you shall not make a graven image carve an image uh, to represent God uh, in the Catholic Church said no we're not doing that we're we're these are aids to worship and you look through that to god well the protestants said now people are associating the statue of the virgin mary with the virgin mary and praying to the statue and no we don't we don't want to do that so you, you've had back and forth by the time duke chapel was built in the 1930s i think protestants were saying hey uh We've stripped our churches down to where they're so plain and so dull and all. Um, uh, we'd like a few helps. And so thus you get neo-Gothic like Duke Chapel. 